yes, I was born Hindu. And at that point, Hindu for the, the biggest part of my life, I mean, like 18, 19 years. But I never understood where am I going after I die? Now, death seemed very scary to me. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Saints Unscripted. I'm your host, David Snell, today with a very special guest, Archie Garg. Welcome, Archie. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Archie, I'm excited to have you on today. I know a little bit of your story, and I'm excited mm -hmm. to hear you tell it. Uh, but before we get into your conversion story, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from, how old you are, what you're up to with life right now, and then we'll jump in. Yeah, so I'm Archie Garg, 20 years old, so a young adult here in the state of Maryland, where crabs are delicious. Um, I'm in the stage of life where I'm at school trying to find out uh, where I want to, you know, go in life in terms of my career and, you know, being prayerful about it, making sure that, you know, keeping God in mind always. And uh, in my fun time, I like to uh, build model rockets, uh, play with Lego uh, robotics, uh, and overall just think about life in general. Right on, man. That's pretty sweet. So uh, what are you studying in school? Yeah, so surprisingly, uh, I'm studying computer science, uh, but now that um, I've been in the church for as long as I have, and because of the Saints Unscripted videos that really showed me how beautiful church history is, um, when I prepared my recent sacrament talk, now I kind of want to become a, a LDS historian, so I'm kind of figuring out, you know, do I jump ship or uh, follow my dreams? Oh wow! Okay, that's pretty intense. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna unpack this in a little bit as we get into your story. Um, so let's jump right in. I want to know um, how the heck did you end up in the church? Whoa! What what was your first exposure to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints? Right. So, uh, born and uh, born and for the most part raised uh, in Southern Virginia, a small town called Abingdon. Um, borders of Bristol, Tennessee. Uh, and so this is back when I was like elementary school, third, fourth grade. And for Christmas, my parents were finding things around because they were recent immigrants to the United States to take us to in order to kind of experience you know, what Christmas is like. Uh, and so as God's fate would have had it, they saw, I think, the Knoxville uh, Temple uh, as a, a festival of, of lights uh, event. And so we drove, I think it was like a 30, 40 hour, not four hour, a minute drive. Oh. Uh, <laughs> right? um, it, it, it definitely felt like a couple hours uh, back when I was young. But we drove there and I remember like the gates were beautiful. Like you could like went, before you even entered the temple, I mean, it was it was like you're entering some different part of the earth. You know, it was like earth, you know, ends before the gates start. And then after the gates, you know, it's, it's something special. And so uh, I remember seeing all of the lights and, and, and how pretty it was. But the thing that caught my attention, and, and now that I know, was the nativity scene. And so I remember seeing uh, baby Christ in the cradle, uh, surrounded by uh, the kings. And, and, and I really got interested to, to know who this person was. Um, and so going throughout the Temple Visitor Center, uh, and, and just interacting with as many people as I could while clinging on to my parents' hand, uh, I remember distinctly seeing, you know, in like gold letters, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And the feeling I had when I read that was, it has a lot of weight to it. You know, it, it's, it's not just a name, it means something. Uh, and so I kind of held it in very high regard. And, and surprisingly, back then, I, you know, as soon as I saw that name, uh, another Christian group came into mind and, uh, called the uh, Amish. And then I was like, okay, who's similar to the Amish? Some Quaker, then Mormon. And so <laughs> I, I never realized that Church Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints and Mormon were the same uh, group of people. <laughs> uh, and so coming back and, 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 and reliving those moments, it just made it even more special. So how uh, old were you at, when you went to the temple? I was probably nine or ten. Um, okay. And you were like, what are these guys doing around this baby in this cradle? So so you were not Christian at all at that time? 
No, I was uh, born uh, Hindu, uh, but even then, down south, there's not many Hindu places of worship. So, you know, my entire family was kind of more or less agnostic and, and just not practicing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So there's your first exposure. What comes next in your story? You know, that was me at the top of the hill for that split second as I saw the church's name in gold. And then came like the, the valley in the sense where there's a lot of time where I didn't have an encounter with the church. You know, I ran around, went about my life in general, uh, completed the eighth grade. And then my family decided to move up to Maryland, where I'm currently at, uh, for a better high school so that I could get into a, a, a university down the road. Uh, and so uh, going to high school in Montgomery County, you know, we drive on the highway and there's this massive castle looking building. I mean, it's 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 hard to miss. Um, and 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 I remember and this is, I would say. 10th, 11th grade, and I had those same childlike thoughts. Oh, that, that's like a Disney castle. There's probably activities and rides and attractions. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we, the entire family was just really curious and captivated because obviously we saw the temple down in Knoxville, but seeing what we now know as the temple, it, it just goes to show, you know, how unique they all are. Well, that would have been Washington, D.C.? Yes. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, it sticks out like a sore thumb. I mean, a beautiful thumb. <laughs> exactly. No, I mean, it, it, it sticks out and it left a impression on our spirit to where one Christmas, you know, when I was in high school, uh, we went to the Festival of Lights again. Uh, and so we pull up into the D.C. temple and the same feelings and the same memories as our Tennessee days. So it kind of brought some nostalgia to the experience not just from the interaction with the church, but just how we've lived our life in general, kicked in. And I remember walking to the visitor center in the DC temple, and that's where I clearly noticed that everyone's wearing a black tag on their shirt. Uh, and it's and, and I remember, you know, black tag, white tag, so I'm like, okay, what does this say? And that's for the first time I see elder and sister. And seeing that, it reminded me of like baby Christ, I, you know, like I, like Christ, you know, between my time in the Knoxville Temple and the DC Temple, I did my, you know, a little bit of research, you know, died on the cross for our sins, is our redeemer. And so the term elder probably means someone who knows a lot about Christ. Sister, obviously, same thing, but for the uh, girls, obviously at that point, I'm, I'm able to walk on my own and I start asking questions like, hey, What's this temple? The, and they had like a model of like the Kirkland Temple and right beside it, a model of King Solomon's Temple. And I just get so immersed into like the, at that point, like the LDS world in the sense where not only was my initial Christian thoughts were like, oh, you know, Christians only have churches. There's no such thing as temples. Like temples is a Indian thing. So where, uh, no, I mean, the church has everything that you need in it. So unfortunately, you know, some sisters approached us. My entire family asked, hey, are you interested in learning more? My parents and you know, still firmly, you know, within Hinduism, uh, kind of uh, pushed them away a little bit. Um, but uh, thankfully, I was able to ask my questions and, and learn from that. And that was 10th grade, you said? Yeah, 10th or 11th. Okay. Okay. And then, you know, it takes three three times to be, you know, you know, um, interacting with the church to um, make everything work out. So <laughs> I then come to the University of Maryland, where I currently am at, studying computer science, and I'm volunteering at the 9-11 service event. And I'm walking back from my shift as a volunteer, and I'm turning around a corner looking at my phone, messaging somebody. And then two elders in white shirts are also turning around the corner and we hit each other. And so I get really embarrassed really fast. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so, so sorry. And so thankfully, you know, as soon as I came to the University of Maryland my freshman year, I have been hungry for Bible study. I wanted to just study the scriptures at all costs. Um, and so basically, unfortunately, every campus group Bible study session were more like social events. It wasn't really focused, a lot of uh, a, a lot of loud noises, just wasn't able to kind of talk to somebody at, at, a, at a personal level. 
So I look up at the elders and I say, hey, do you guys do Bible study? And they look at me in the weirdest way ever, but I, I realized why they, why, why they looked at me that, that way. Uh, and they said, sure, yes. Um, because I, I think they weren't expecting someone to be, you know, hey, do you do scripture study after you run in, uh, into each other? So it sounds like you're already trying, you're already seeking after scripture study, Bible study. Uh, about mm-hmm. when were you converted to Christianity or when did you start believing in Jesus? The entirety of my sixth grade and then ninth through 12th. So in sixth grade, I... I, I, I would always say a prayer before class started or, or before school started. You know, God, I'm here. You know, please protect me. Please guide me throughout the school day. Um, and, and I'd say that prayer you know, every day pretty habitually. Um, and then for 7th and 8th, somehow I fell off of that habit. But come again, 9th through 12th, I'm doing the same thing. I'm like, you know, God, you know, you're here with me. You can help me, you know, become a member of this club, help me excel in this way, help me understand what am I learning, much appreciated. Uh, so technically sixth grade, but in practice and habit, uh, ninth grade. Okay. All right. Gotcha. So you've made a firm commitment now in 2021 to meet mm-hmm. with the Latter-day Saint missionaries. How did, how did that go? It was beautiful. And I look back at my lessons, and I was one of those uh, friends of the church, as uh, as I was called, who who surprisingly didn't ask any questions. I was just learning and learning and learning, and it was just making sense to me naturally. Like I was probably the best friend a elder could have when it came to just you know being really receptive uh, and being willing to just open my heart and uh, and listen to something that I, I have not heard about. And so, you know, we were meeting for what, September four or five months. Um, on month like two, they introduced me to the Book of Mormon. And while in while I look back at it, I, I should have been like, ooh, what's this Book of Mormon? What What is this? Uh, and just be really skeptical about it. Thankfully, I think God had a different plan. It was like, you know, the Bible is composed of books. The Book of Mormon is a book. So it's obviously an extension of the Bible. Uh, And so, you know, even when I was not a member, I kind of made that connection. And that really helped because I was able to kind of honestly and truthfully uh, pray about it, uh, about its truthfulness without, you know, being persuaded one way or the other. Uh, and so reading first Nephi, second Nephi, it really related to my recent moving into college because college and high school, uh, is very different. You know, you, you have a lot more freedom, uh, there's a lot more things going on. And so, um, leaving Jerusalem to build a ship, to come to the Americas, uh, really spoke in terms of, you know, yes, there's hardship, but when there's God with you, there's no hardship. I actually did ask one stupid question. <laughs> I asked, do you guys follow the Pope? Because I, you know, at that point, you know, I, I didn't know that the church had its own leadership structure. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, do you guys follow the Pope? And and they're like, no, but we respect the Pope, obviously, it does his fair share of good work. Um, but we follow someone called President Russell M. Nelson. And so, you know, same thing, you know. I could have easily been skeptical. I'd been taught or in terms of my research that the Pope was like the head of Christianity as a whole. And this new guy, okay, who is uh, President Nelson? But, you know, God, again, spoke to me. It's like, you know, learn uh, a little bit and kind of just listen to the elders. Uh, so they explained what Russell M. Nelson's personal life was, you know, world-renowned heart surgeon and someone who was studying computer science. You know, that STEM correlation really was interesting. I, I felt like, you know, if, if if he could be great, then so could I. Uh, and it just uh, served to strengthen my growing, my initial baby testimony. And so, yeah, we talked about, you know, who he was. We, we watched a couple conference talks. And that's when I realized, like, he came from God. The way the words were coming out of his mouth 
and the peace and tranquility that I felt just listening to him were was so much better than anything the world had ever offered me. Because, you know, I've gone to beaches, I've heard the calming sounds of the ocean. But this, you know, it put ice in places where I needed just to calm down and focus and collect my thoughts. Uh, and so, you know, I, I became Russell M. Nelson's uh, favorite fanboy after that. Uh, and I was like, this is it. Um, you know, the leader of the church is true. And so four or five months down the road, come February 2022, I ended up getting baptized uh, in, uh, on February 27th. Uh, and, and this was after... You know, much positive experiences, learning as much as I can, which included the plan of salvation. You know, yes, I was born Hindu, and at that point, Hindu for for the the biggest part of my life, I mean, like eighteen, nineteen years. Um, but I never understood where am I going after I die. You know, death seemed very scary to me. Uh, in fact, I kind of cried in that lesson because. I was I, I was just so 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 thankful that there is a plan afterwards, and that it you know even though it was portrayed again by Christians who might have good intentions but might come off kind of judgmental or whatever as like black or white white you know you either go to heaven or hell, but understanding that there was celestial terrestrial celestial uh, kingdoms that according to what your specific situation was and your acceptance of the gospel, God would treat you accordingly. That personal touch that even heaven and, and hell can be so personalized was like, if there was a God, and there is a God, and there will always be a God, this is how he would save all of us, or as, as many people as he can. And so then that's when I officially took upon the uh, sacred understanding that, you know, not only am I Archie Gard, but I'm a son of God. I'm not only one person out in the mist and 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 and, and minuscule. I'm a son of God, and God has a plan for me. And that if I make promises, you know, the covenant, that one day I can return back to Him. And so this new understanding of like the gospel isn't here to shame you. It isn't here to push you away. It's here to tell you what to do. You know, there's always going to be an and objective right versus wrong. But you can mess up as we're human. But because you made a promise, you can keep making that as long as you're getting better. And as long as you really, you know, have it in the spirit that you genuinely believe in and what you're making a promise with God with. Yeah, it's and, more about a, a re- a, that relationship with God. And there's a lot of room for, you know, right. redemption and grace and, you know, room for improvement but but not necessarily demanding perfection in this in this mortal life exactly and 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 then i realized i mean if you seek perfection and make it your entire personality you'll never have it it's when you seek god when you seek the scripture and to this day when you seek the elders and the sisters that then you can move closer to perfection because it no longer becomes about you. It becomes about how you interact with the universe as a whole. Uh, and so that's why um, when I saw the plan of salvation and the generosity in which the elders explained it to me, I realized that when people say Mormons are the nicest Christian people on the planet, I was like, true. I mean, um, I, I used to hear stories about how church members uh, would, 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 would offer humanitarian work or if there's a neighbor in need, invite them over for dinner. And I'm like, you have a God that's willing to uh, work with you this much, then anything is possible. But yeah, so, ba- so baptized February 27th. Um, I will say, you know, I, at the university, I became... I went from introverted to extroverted. So I actually opened up and started talking around, you know, expressing my ideas, started telling people that I was interested in the church. People started calling me names. On the week of my baptism, I experienced severe bullying online. 
Uh, and so, you know, even though I had every reason um, to to push it off and hold off and say, hey, I'm in, I'm in a tough spot. Not only are people you know, making fun of me, they're threatening me. Uh, in fact, it got so big that the university had to take me into emergency housing accommodations. Uh, just wow. for, you know, yeah, just for me, just being myself and, share, and sharing, you know, this is the church that I believe in that's true. Uh, and that, you know, I, I want to be with God and I want to live right. And, and so, thankfully, strength came in really comprehensively. It was, it was like a warm blanket even during that week. Um, even though there was times where I was sad, the, the, the God's comfort was there, like, you know, A, you already committed, but B, if you back away now, you give the adversary what they want. And so when you make that first step, you, you might as well make it the most firm step you'll ever make. And so even when people were, uh, you know, giving me the runaround saying, oh, these guys, or a cult, which I don't know how anyone can make that a, uh, a statement, because you know it's quite the opposite. I, I, I pushed forward, I persevered. Um, immersion uh, of water, cleansing of the soul with fire. Uh, then what really spoke to me is that the laying of the hands, confirmation, and uh, of the Holy uh, Ghost was that um, while I was taking lessons, I was invited to church as a non-member. And I was invited to the uh, elders quorum meeting. And we read something, I think, in Matthew, where someone had recently gotten baptized. And there was a moment afterward where they got their laying of the hands done. And I'm like, wow, it even more parallel to the Bible uh, and the scriptures. Uh, and, 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 and I knew that from there on afterward, after February 27th, that you know, a new life had begun. I was, I was going to go from victim to someone that would take anything that anyone would give them to someone who is going to steadfast with God and, and chart their own journey. And so it's been almost two years now. Uh, now we're in 2024. A lot has happened. Somehow my computer found out that I was a member of the church. <laughs> so um, the, uh, the technology is always listening to uh, my life, I guess. Um, but I started getting really anti-church material after my one-year anniversary. Mm. Uh, and It's inevitable. And the thing is, like, you know, I, I, I've, you know, being extroverted and learning how to debate a little bit, you know, I had, like, the basics on, you know, there's always going to be a born again. But the anti-church material was, was against, but obviously in a different way where the spirit was so repulsed by it. Like, even if you wanted to listen to whatever they were saying, you just couldn't. The way that they were saying it, the, the toxicity or the venomosity that I was feeling from those videos, it, it, it was just, it, it, it was loud, just disgusting. And so thankfully, because of that, I, I wasn't wrapped up in that kind of uh, mist of confusion. Uh, parallelism when you're walking to the tree of life, holding onto the iron rod. And, and thankfully, my algorithm on YouTube started changing. And then thankfully, I saw Saints Unscripted, which when I saw Saints Unscripted, I was like, oh, another anti-church channel that I have to <laughs> deal with. I watched my first video. It was actually another conversion story. I think that person was um, coming from, I think, atheist or agnostic uh, to the church. Um, and I realized that you know, this is this is my source of of inspiration. I, I I felt as I had felt with President Nelson, you know, peace, understanding, uh, and the fact of the matter is that you, know, you were just there to present the story or the topic of the video, and and and, and leaving the agency to the person that's watching it, because uh, compared to the anti-church videos. They try to take away your agency and say, hey, if you don't do this or you don't do that or you don't get mad or you don't turn on your own fellow church members, that somehow you're less of a person. Uh, mm. Being supposed to saints unscripted right after that heart-wrenching uh, material uh, made me addicted. 
So I ended up binge watching all the other conversion stories. I watched See, the we, one. See, we but... did we did take away your agency after all. Made you an addict. <laughs> or no, uh, addict in the best way possible. Just being <laughs> surrounded by the gospel and the and more importantly, the gospel being put in practice. And so, yeah, I we'll watched Saints Unscripted, and kind of put on the armor of God as a result. You know, kind of not only became mentally educated but spiritually educated mm. and so and, and i work hopefully prepared to because i think what happens a lot of time when we find that antagonistic material a lot of mm. times stuff you maybe have never heard of and sometimes we <laughs> respond to that with kind of defensiveness and we just say no that's all a lie or i'm not going to listen mm. to this or you get angry at them but when you are familiar with the topic and you've kind of, as you mentioned, kind of armed yourself with knowledge, um, then it, it, one, it allows you to be more calm, I think, because you, you're not quite so uh, defensive, but you can just kind of look at the, at the subject and say, hey, you know, maybe I understand where this person is coming from, but what about this and this and this? And, you know, you have all these other, you know, weapons in your arsenal, so to speak. And people can use the word controversial way too much in the sense that, you know, the blacks in the priesthood or, you know, us escaping persecution and some of the stuff that we, that we might have done in Utah um, or other social issues that the church has taken stances on, you know, A, isn't bad if you properly frame it and, and look at the history and the reasoning. You know, sometimes we have to make do with the hand that we were dealt. And, and so you end up becoming less of a hater or, or a judgmental person more of like an empathizer i have been given an amazing life since baptism you know, it turned around 180 degrees you know since then i haven't had really a single sad day there were days where i was seeing the entire material and i was dismayed you know put off but the fact of the matter of that you know you have the holy spirit it's always there just made up for it tenfold and so if anything slightly inconvenient ever happened uh, between baptism and now. I mean, it's been eclipsed God's blessings 10 times over. You know, God has removed me from tables where there were people who would end up bringing me down. Uh, God has always put me in a position where, you know, I dodge the bullet, you know, whether that's bad influence, bad people, bad situations. You know, at a, at a university that's that is like more known for drinking uh, and doing those kind of things, uh, God telling me you know there's a better way to have fun, uh, and and that you are better situated. Just keep finding friends that match those values, aka the other members that are also at my uh, university. It, you know the community just brought it all together, and so that's where I am right now. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I think that that's just, uh, it, it's an incredible journey. And, and I guess to wrap up, I've, I want to ask for those who may be learning about the church right now and mm -hmm. in that position of maybe facing some negative peer pressure or maybe facing some antagonistic material online, what advice would you have for those people right now? Biggest thing I could say is that slow and steady will always win the race. Um, you know, the Bible talks about, and the Book of Mormon especially talks about, you know, how Nephi or Lehi or Alma prayerfully considered each of their steps. You know, they didn't move or do anything without asking the Lord. And so don't be too quick to take things at face value. You know, church doctrine is very complex. It's rooted in the scripture. It's rooted in the philosophy of man. And 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 and, and more so, if you have any questions, ask. I mean, if you're with the missionaries and you're seeing antagonistic material online, bring that into your discussion with the missionary. Say, hey, I've been seeing this. Can you please explain this to me? And they will, and they'll explain it really well. Because... Everything always has an answer. 
And, you know, we can't use our present moral compass to gauge how right or wrong someone was in the past. You know, they, they were living in a different environment. And so just take things little by little. Um, I think the best source of information is directly from the church. Um, if you're learning about the church, you should be going to the church for information because a lot of what you, you'll see is our secondhand comments, secondhand experiences. While they might be important and, and, and might be true, they're also one-off occurrences and that might not describe the church as a whole. And so I think experiencing the gospel and noticing it, how it affects your life, um, would be the best, you know, kind of defense you can put up because take, take note, you know, when you're invited to church by the missionaries or you want to go to a LDS church, what you experience during the service, the things that you're hearing, the structure that everything has, uh, you know, take note when you're reading the Book of Mormon, you know, put aside archaeology or or you know your traditional means of measuring. This is a spiritual journey, so measure it via your spirit, and, and, and ask you know what in my life sounded just like the chapter I read. Um, and if you really hold true to yourself and, and understand there are there are good places to get information and bad places, that'll make your discussions with the missionaries so much more easier and so much more productive. The end of the day, ask and you shall receive. I love that, and I love the the idea of slow and steady wins the race. I think sometimes we make some very hasty decisions, or we come to very hasty conclusions that may not be, you know, totally accurate. And and coming from someone who who has studied a decent amount of church history, you know, it's not always going to be butterflies and rainbows. There have been mistakes that have been made, or things, or even terrible things that have have happened. Uh, throughout, you know, our 200 years of church history, um, but but having tools um, and perspective and context for those things is is really helpful. And it you know it might help someone understand why someone can still you know be a faithful believing member of this faith while even you know still knowing about the the tough pieces of church history, because um, there's a lot a lot that goes into it. Archie Garg. Thank you so much for being with us today. This has been fantastic. Uh, if people have questions for you, is that is it okay if they drop them in the YouTube comments? Absolutely. I'd be more than happy to, to hear what you guys have to say. And with that, we will see you all next time.